Hey guys, so today I'm going to be installing a Victron Energy Smart Shunt for the lithium setup in the Robo. So why don't we head on in and I'll talk about what a shunt is and why I'm fitting one. Let's go. So what's a shunt? Well, it's basically like an accountant for your batteries. Um, it keeps track of how much energy you're drawing out of your batteries from your fridge and your freezer and your inverter and your lights and everything that you run on your 12 volt system. And it also keeps track of how much is going back into your batteries from your chargers. So once it's calibrated, it gives you an accurate reading of the state of charge. So you know how much is left in those batteries so you don't run out when you're off grid. Uh, this shunt, it's a smart shunt, so it's Bluetooth enabled, so basically an app on my phone becomes um, the interface, the display panel, so I don't need to run extra wires and mount a screen somewhere here in the Robo, which is really, really handy. So why install a shunt? Well, I recently did a battery upgrade on the Robo. I uh, fitted two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, so I'll link to a, um, uh, that video up on the screen somewhere. Um, so unlike the AGM batteries that came with the Robo, see, AGMs have like a, a linear relationship with voltage and state of charge, so you get a really good indication with AGMs what their state of charge is by monitoring the voltages. Lithiums are a little bit different, so they hold a much higher voltage through the discharge cycle. Um, they pretty much they're at 13.5 when they're 100%, and they're like 12.9 when they're down to 20%. So they hold that high voltage all the way pretty much to the end when they're dead flat, and then they just drop off the cliff. So because of that narrow range of voltages that they operate in, and they hold quite a high voltage through their discharge uh, cycle, using the voltage to get a measure of their state of charge, it's it's not that accurate. It's, it's an indication, but it's not good enough. Um, say, if you're off grid for an extended period of time and there's days and days of overcast weather, um, like what happened to us on our last trip, we basically we had four days with no sun so there's there's hardly any solar going back into those batteries we're not running a generator or anything like that uh, on the morning of the fifth day we were down to just under 12 volts which i think is roughly 10 percent maybe a bit less maybe a bit more but i don't know I, I had no idea so luckily the sun came out on that day so um we got a little bit more charge back into the batteries but without a shunt i had absolutely no idea how much charge was left in those batteries so that's why i'm fitting this the accountant to tell me what my accurate state of charge is so i don't go through that situation again okay so fitting a shunt is pretty much a must it's it's a highly recommended to fit one of these things with a lithium setup because of what i just spoke about before so why didn't i fit one when i installed the batteries well basically i'd be lying if i didn't say i was trying to be a little bit cheap um, I have already dropped a bunch of money on those batteries and the chargers, and this thing's 200 bucks, so they're not cheap. It's got some great features, which I'll go through in a little bit. Um, but I thought, I thought I'd be able to use the voltmeter to get an indication of my state of charge. See, I, I couldn't foresee a situation where I'd need like a highly accurate state of charge of those batteries. And as fate would have it, our first trip away with the lithium batteries, I wish I had one of these guys. So, time to fit one. And look, I'm not an expert on this stuff, right? There's far better resources online, YouTube, um, the internet, Google, whatever. Um, I once heard that you don't truly understand something unless you can explain it to someone else. So I guess this is like me filming this is sort of like me trying to explain it to myself. And if anybody out there who's 
made it this far and is watching this. Um, I'm hoping you've learned something. I hope I don't get it horribly wrong. If I do, please let me know in the comments down below. All right, so let's get to fitting it. Alrighty, so the installation of this shunt is, it's for my setup only. Some setups are slightly different and there's different ways to wire it up depending on if you've got it in series or parallel or 24 volt or you want to check the voltage of a, an auxiliary battery. So this is just how I'm going to set it up for my uh, 12 volt system. So basically, if we have a look at the batteries down here, I've got two 100 amp hour batteries connected in parallel. So that's positive connected to positive, negative connected to negative. And the positive terminal from, let's just call this battery one, the positive terminal from battery one is what feeds the system through the positive bus bar uh, just down here and to the uh, the switch panel at the back of my switch panel and the negative terminal from let's call this battery two that's what feeds the earth or the negative of the system through the negative bus bar and that's just how this works uh, I'm not 100% why I, if I had to take a guess I'd assume it's something to do with you know, um, balancing the cells and you you got the current flowing across both batteries. Um, so yeah, this system set up in parallel, battery one supplies the positive, battery two supplies uh, the negative. Now the shunt itself, if you have a look at this shunt, you've got two the battery minus, two the system minus. So basically what happens there is the negative terminal from battery two goes into the battery minus on the bus bar. And then two system minus, the continuation of that negative cable is what feeds the bus bar. So apparently that's where quite a few people go wrong. So everything, everything that all your 12 volt devices and all that need to come from this side, okay? You can't have anything mounted to the battery minus or to the battery directly. If you do that, basically you're hiding the uh, the expenses from the accountant. Everything has to pass through the shunt for it to account for the energy running through it. So basically the two system minus now becomes your negative terminal. Now this is a pretty easy setup because I've got the bus bar on the other side there. All I need to do is connect this cable to the battery minus and then the other side of the cable that I snip connect it to the system minus and then everything else is all downstream so this is a really easy setup for me and my situation now if I were to I don't know say add a big inverter like a 2000 watt inverter and I needed to put it over here because I want it close to the batteries um, if I mounted it on this side basically the calibration will be all over the place you're hiding those finances those expenses from the accountant it won't know and you'll have no idea what your state of charge is it'll all become out of sequence out of whack uncalibrated so that's a mistake that a lot of people make um, and also I've got a little power cable that came with the with the shunt and you connect that into this V battery plus uh, terminal there and that that will run to the positive terminal on battery one it's just a tiny little cable just this little guy it's got a little ring terminal just clips into there easy peasy all I've got to do now is figure out where to mount it hmm. I'll get back to you on that one alrighty so I've had a good look and I've got no doubt that where I'm going to mount this is sacrilege to any experts out there. I'm just going to mount it to the top of the um, the bracket that holds the battery in. And it's nice and easy. Everything's accessible. Battery terminal to there. Terminal to there. Back to the bus bar. So I just think I'm going to bolt it straight to that. Sorry if I upset anyone. <laughs> I think that'll do. 
Alrighty, time to go drill some holes. So there it is, mounted just to the top of that bracket. So I'll put this back on and then uh, snip the cable, put the terminals on the end, bit of heat shrink, wire it all up, and then I'll set it up. So like I said before, apologies to any experts out there, I probably performed uh, a huge no-no there, but yeah, that's uh, what I came up with. Alrighty, so just used a hydraulic crimping tool, a bit of heat shrink, made it up, the shape how I need it, and yeah, fit there, just perfect. Alright, let's get on to the other one. The negative cable goes to the negative bus bar to the system minus side of the shunt. All right, and the two battery minus the cable that joins to the negative terminal on battery two. Okay, so just gonna install the uh, the power cable for the shunt that pops in there. I'll tie these cables up later, but this is gonna get mounted over on um, the positive terminal battery one. Just stick him right there. I'll wire up all the other positives. And we'll turn it on. And have a look. All right, so I'll just quickly run through this Victron Connect app. So we can see there our smart shunt is right there. Just click on that. And I haven't calibrated this yet. So you see it already says 100%. The first time it activates, it comes up with uh, with 100%. So I won't bore you with me going through and setting this up. There are a couple of settings I need to change for a lithium uh, battery bank. But right off the bat, you can see it gives you a reading of our current voltages our amp draw so we're actually drawing 8.3 amps at the moment I've just turned the fridge on I've got the freezer set to negative 6 and the fridge at 3 or 4 it's been off for a couple of weeks um, so that's running and I've got three sets of LED light strips um, how many amps have been drawn since it first connected now a really good thing about this app is you've got the history uh, logging all the uh, the ins and the outs of the battery you know, you got your discharge and the number of charge cycles and your minimum battery voltage and your maximum voltage, time since last full charge. Up the top here, you've got your trends on this graph here and you can select that drop down menu and you can change what graph you wanna look at, whether it's voltages, currents in amps, obviously, power in watts, consumed amp hours and your state of charge. Right, so I might just turn off a few of these lights and we'll see those numbers drop so i just turned off one set of lights turn off that set turn off that yeah there you go you can see the uh the amp hours just drop them so that's pretty cool actually because you can you can basically turn off all your gear and then you can work out how much exactly each item or each device you have draws out of your batteries so while we're here, I'm actually just going to turn on the AC charger. Now I've got a Victron AC charger as well, so I can connect to that via Bluetooth as well. But let's have a look, see what's going on here. Now all of a sudden we've jumped from negative amps to positive amps. <laughs> Making a liar of me because it goes back to negative. So these batteries are pretty full. This is a 15 amp AC charger. And but now we're in the positive, so it's putting four amps back into the batteries. Alrighty, well that's pretty cool. And if I turn that charger off. There you go. No amps coming into the batteries, just drawing out of them now. Alrighty, I've also got the uh, solar panels set up, so I'm just going to go and plug them in. It's pretty overcast here, but we'll see what we get. Yeah, so you see the uh, the amps draw 
is reducing obviously those panels are putting something back into the batteries not much because it is quite overcast out there at the moment i'll just flick you out there and let you have a look there's quite a cloudy day in perth today there's the solar panel set up i've got two of them connected at the moment and there we go instead of drawing eight amps we're putting in three so I'll call that a win. Oh, well, that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned something. I know I did. Uh, like I said, I'm not an expert. If I've got something horribly, horribly wrong, please let me know. Leave it in the comments. And um, if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. And we'll catch you out there. See ya. Never need to worry anymore. Know exactly how long I've got left. Time remaining infinite because we're putting power back in. Awesome.